just want to uh, introduce the drum. I'm going to be doing the uh, offering to open us up, and then we'll be doing a live night knowledge entry sequence in, in this Olomi nation. Thank you.
that have the moral authority to speak for our territory. It's the same for all tribes. They have the moral authority to speak for their lands, their traditional territory. That's moral authority. That's the authority given us, given to us by Creator or by God. No one else has that responsibility. And that's important to realize these lands. The indigenous voice must be followed when it comes to finding out, when it comes to understanding how these lands must be taken care of. When they direct you to take care of Mother Earth and all living things, our people learned, started working very hard to learn how to take care of the four layers. The insects, the fungi, the plants, the fin, the birds, the fog, the, the rocks, the shadows. Those are all our responsibility. Our people worked hard for thousands and thousands of years to know how to take care of these things. And they learned how to do it in a very effective way, a very sustainable way. A way that would have carried them through until the last sunrise. We need to get back on that path, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Our, the central coast of California and inland to this valley here. This was the most populated area of indigenous people north of Mexico City. Did you know that? No. This had very heavy, heavy population of indigenous people. Our people lived there for 12, 14, 15,000 years or more. And if you think of that in terms of generations, that'd be 800, 900, maybe 1,000 generations or more. That's how long our people lived here. And then, in 1769, the colonizers came. The, the Spaniards and the missions came to California. And a lot of people think that they came to evangelize the indigenous people in the same manner. Um, as Jesus Christ, to evangelize in the name of Jesus. Nothing could be further than the truth. Nothing. Whenever the missionaries and the Spaniards came, they came to fulfill the directives from the papal bulls. Please study the papal bulls. Those papal bulls, there's a number of them. There was a paper bull in 1453 that was passed by, uh, that was uh, uh, put out by Pope Alexander VI. That paper bull said that all indigenous people are heathens, pagans, and savages. That indigenous people have no soul. And that's an important one. Because if you do not have a soul, you're not a human being. And if you're not a human being, they can kill you. They can rape you. They can enslave you. They can torture you. They can do whatever they want to you, and it's not a sin. Because you are not a human being. The papal bull said that all indigenous people are the enemies of Jesus Christ. That indigenous people were to be put into perpetual slavery. That indigenous people who were having their properties and their possessions taken from them. That's exactly what they did to indigenous people around the world. If you're indigenous, that is your history. As well as ours. That is your history. Those indigenous, those, me, those papal bulls have never been rescinded by the Catholic Church. They remain an official doctrine of the Catholic Church today. And in 1823, the Supreme Court of the United States accepted the doctrine of discovery as being the law of the land for the United States. That's brutal. That is brutal. But that's the honest truth. 
against the California Indians. That is to be expected. The governor is saying that all California Indians were to be exterminated. How do you like that? So we have the church coming after us. We have Spain coming after us. We have Mexico coming after us. Now we have the Americans in the California period coming after us. What did they do? One of the first treasury bonds that was passed by the state of California. And you know they passed treasury bonds for the public good. They pass it for schools, school bonds, parks, roadways, waterways, etc. Well, one of the very first bonds that was passed by the state of California was to pay for the extermination of California Indians. People were you by investing into California government bonds. And that investment was for the purpose of killing and exterminating Indians. And with that money, they paid bounties, 25 cents to five dollars for every dead Indian. That's how that government money was spent. California is the last place on earth where they had government-sponsored um, bounty and government-sponsored militias who were paid to go on out, search out people, and kill them, all with the authority of the government. That happened right here. Right here. They passed the bonds. That money, money, they went up in the militia. They would go up, going out and up into the mountains because of the gold countries. They went up there to search out the Indians and to kill them. They received the money for every scalp. In 1873, the Santa Cruz Sentinel newspaper, which was still existing then and exists today, put out one of those little legal notices that said, the city of the, the county of Santa Cruz would no longer pay bounty money. They had paid bounty money for over 20 years for dead Indians. That was horrible. Our history, in our history, those three periods of brutal colonization, what they wanted is they wanted to destroy our culture. They wanted to destroy our humanity. They wanted to destroy our environments. They believed that our food plants were totally inferior to what they had in Europe. They believed our grazing grasses for the animals were inferior. And so then they bring in their grazing grasses, the oats, um, and, and, and the other grazing grasses. And they quickly, they grow much faster than our native plants because our native plants have a responsibility to take care of a community of the fungi, the insects, the birds, the four-legged, etc. So our plants are very hardy, but they grow slower. Those European grazing plants did not do that, so they grew fast and shaded out all of our native plants. Today, when you drive down Highway 101, Highway 280, Highway 17, no matter which highway you drive down, look at the grasses and the mountains and the hills and the landscapes. Those are 96, 98 percent non-native, gone. But those native plants, they were our food, our medicines, our basket trees, our materials for building our houses and building and making our clothing. They just totally destroyed that. We had nothing of value to give to them. To provide nothing of value. We had eight different kinds of California Indian potatoes. How many of you know that there's a, such a thing as a California Indian potato? We had California Indian onion, carrots, celery. 
A lot of our seed plants are very important and food plants with high nutritional value. God, today our time is working to bring back all of our food plants. Soon you'll be able to have those food plants and to learn about them. The time is quickly for the hell, guys. <laughs> um, the destruction of native, native people never ended. It never ended. It just evolved to what we see today. These immoral laws. These laws, they continue to destroy our culture, our environments, and our spirituality. And there's probably no better example in our, in our region than what's happening at Eurostop. That petition that's going around now asking you to sign it. That's on Eurostock. Eurostock is at the southern end of Gilroy. And it is at the bottom of the Santa Cruz Mountains, at the southernmost point of the Santa Cruz Mountains. The next range up is the Gavilon Range. But here, here at Eurostock, that was our most sacred site. That's where our most important ceremonies were held. Eurostock translates to the place of the big head. And our big head ceremonies were our most important. At Eurostock, that was also the home of our spiritual leader, Kutsui. We had four villages living around or living on Eurostock for the purpose of maintaining those lands as sacred and worthy of ceremony, of wor worthy of having ceremony calling Creator for so we can hear our messages, hear our prayers, know what's in our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our spirits. It was a very important site, we were stopped. And our people were there for thousands and thousands of years. We took care of the landscape so that it provided for the four-legged, the wing, the fin, etc. And then the Spanish came and the missions came. And our people were removed and taken to the missions. That's when prayer and ceremony at Eurostox ended. When the missions closed in 1833. A number of our ancestors who survived went to Eurostock and they wanted to restore and return to the world they knew. But of course that could not happen. That could not happen. And then just years later they were permanently removed from that land. There was a smallpox epidemic. 90% of the people got it and died. The rest were removed from the land. I'll just throw this in. They had a vaccine for smallpox, but it was illegal to give that vaccine to Indians. It was illegal. Eurostock then went into ranching lands and it changed hands a number of times. But Eurostock went into bankruptcy in about um, 2015, I think it was. And then a group of investors bought it. And that investor group, what they do is they buy distressed properties. And they try to find a way to monetize it. To make money as quickly as they can and to flip it. So the, uh, the good examples here in Eurostock. Their goal there is to turn is to do sand, uh, uh, mining of sand and gravel. They're not going to do the, the mining. They just want to get that permit and then sell the land with that permit and then let these other people whose, whose business is mining go on in and actually do the mining. So they just want to get that permit. But the value of your stock is about 30 
million dollars. But if they get that permit, they can sell that property for up to $120 million. How's that for a quick profit in a matter of a couple of years? It has no recognition of spirituality or culture. All it recognizes is dollars. We ask the students here at Eurostock to please get involved. Help us protect it. You're very important here at the Anza. This is very important because you're in Santa Clara County. We're talking to other universities and community colleges, etc. But many of them are outside Santa Clara County. So their voice isn't as important as yours. It's not as important as yours. So please get involved and help us. Please get involved and help us. Our Amamutsun tribe is coming back. We have an Amamutsun land trust. We're restoring the traditional way our ancestors took care of Mother Earth. And if you'd like to learn more about that, go to our website, amamutsanlandtrust.org, and learn about how, we take, how we're restoring traditional stewardship of the land. And soon, for the past four years, we've been researching how our ancestors took care of the oceans and the coastline and the fish and the seaweed and the shellfish and the sea mammals. And then yesterday we attended, the last two days, Monday and Tuesday, uh, we attended a conference in Santa Rosa with other tribes. And it's time for us to start stewarding the oceans as well and to, try, and, and to bring health back to the oceans. We need to restore balance to Mother Earth. If we're going to do that, you know, a lot of people think that science is the answer to climate change. Science is the one that created the problem. Einstein said that the thinking that created the problem was not the kind of thinking that's going to solve the problem. We need new ways of thinking. We need new ways of thinking. And we believe that our ancestors showed us how that is to do how that's to work. If you're, if you're involved and you, have, you care about climate change, work with indigenous communities and follow their lead. That's what we need to do. I'm going to open it up for questions now. Are there any questions? Just for a second. Plants, animal species, 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this is an important corridor, wildlife corridor. It's, we need to protect this because this is where um, animals can pass north to south and east to west. It's a very important wildlife corridor. The mining operation comes here. It'll be in place for 30 years. And we'll lose that. Perhaps those species is more important or more impacted than the mountain lion. Because now there is no real corridor for them to get out of the Santa Cruz Mountains. I believe there's like 67, 68, 69 mountain lions in Santa Cruz. And they're really inbreeding a lot. Yeah. And it's, been, it's really, and it, it is endangering the species. And so we need to find a way to get the mountain lions to, 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 to follow that corridor and to go east and to go south to two of the other mountain ranges. And protecting your stock is important for that. Plus, there's badgers. Here. And badgers are fierce. Badgers are fierce. If they're on the road and there's a truck coming down the road, they're going to try and take it on. That's how fierce they are. But they're also very threatened. And, and, and they need to be protected. There's very important species like red legged frog. Some of the largest red-legged frogs I ever see are, are on this property. It's just incredible what they have there. When you walk through the waterways, the creeks and the rivers, the streams, there's a lot of waterways there. There's Tar Creek, Tick Creek, the Paha Road, the Sergeant Creek, and, 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 and a few others. And those are very important because they allow a lot of, of, of underground recharge to take care of the, 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 the to, to replenish the, the water supply underground. But if this mining operation goes in there, those creeks, many of those creeks, will be destroyed. And then what's going to happen? You know, the sand and the gravel, it allows the water to, to be absorbed or to uh, percolate down underneath uh, to the water storage of the ground. But without that sand and gravel, what happens is whenever the storms hit, the water is just going to run down into the bottom and go out to the oceans. And it's not going to be stored in the ground. That's going to have a tremendous impact on wildlife because... The underground storage is what feeds those springs year round. The wildlife come to this area in the, in, the, in the summertime because they know those springs are always flowing and they can get fresh water there. But you, but you allow this project to happen and it's going to dry up those springs. And that water will not be stored. And it's going to pollute the rivers again. About eight, nine, ten years ago, the Pajaro River, which is the main river here uh, on Eurostock, was recognized as the most polluted river in the United States, or one of the top most polluted rivers in the United States. And they put a lot of money in the story and everything else. And then now they're considering, and a lot of that destruction of that river was caused by mines. And so if they allow this mining operation to work, I mean all that work to restore that river would be for nothing. We lost. I'll stop there. Are there, are there other questions? Other questions for students?